Welcome to the Lore Tours of Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2951. This is where I walk the floor of IAE and tell you all about the history of the ships on display and their creators. Now join me on the floor for your tour. Welcome to Origin Day here on the floor, and happy Thanksgiving for those of you in America that when this video is going to be coming out. Thank you for watching all of this so far. We're, almost, we're over halfway through for these lower tours, and I hope you've been enjoying these. Please do a, just kind of a heads up. If you've been enjoying these, you've been enjoying this a lot. We do lots of lore stuff like this all the time. Make sure you like the video to help spread the word. Subscribe to get more content like this on a regular basis. And if you want to be told when this comes out, you got to hit the little bell icon and got to hit all notifications. Otherwise, it doesn't send anything to you. <clears throat> With that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about Origin. Who are they? What ships do they make? Why do they make them? And so on and so forth. Well, the history of Origin Jumpworks, it's their first, their full name is Origin Jumpworks GmbH, which is the German word for LLC, or the German equivalent of an LLC. They were founded on the banks of the Rhine in Germany, mostly as a parts manufacturer for Robert Space Industries and other high-end, uh, well, for high-end engines. Um, so they made most of the engines for the yachts of origin, but also for the capital ships of origin. They were proud of their heritage from being from Earth, and they did pretty well overall. Now, they were also um, in the middle of the Meser era, so they got a little bit more of extra help. Um, but yeah, they they'd made, made, were working with Aegis Dynamics and, and, uh, and RSI frequently for making parts, so they were pretty well loved uh, by the, in, in, inside the industry. <clears throat> However, by the end of the um, the Meser era, Origin was starting to experiment with new ideas. Their first ever ship was the 600i. Um, and the argument, I think, was that they would build the 600i as a uh, easy ship to enter the market to fill a need. <clears throat> Because Origin was getting its start as a ship manufacturer instead of a parts manufacturer in the middle of the worst uh, cargo crisis in the UEE's history. Uh, many of the companies that had um, helped with the, the measures during the uh, measure era had collapsed. And many of these companies who were making uh, transport ships had just disappeared. So there was no new parts being made for them. Many of them were already aging as it were it was. So there was a, just not enough ability to transport goods, all the goods that was needed across the empire. Uh, so Origin was one of those companies that stepped forward and decided to fill the role with the 600i. Now the 600, I don't think it was called the i, I think it was just called the 600. The 600 series was just a, a freight transport. No frills, freight transport. Use the same sort of design styles that we see the 600i use today, but the i is actually indicated for its kind of luxury. Um, but it, it quickly, as it as it started to that started to do well, they decided to venture back into what they got started with, which was luxury, building the 100i as a test frame, which didn't work too well, um, and then releasing the 200 and the 300 series shortly after, towards the end of the 29th century. They quickly became one of the top five uh, companies in the UEE for ship for ships, and um, then they made a controversial decision. Uh, up to this point, they had been proud of their Earth heritage that they built, made everything. They they all of their ships from, had parts manufactured from Earth, including the 600i. But in 2913, Jennifer Fiskers declared that Terra was the future of culture for the UEE. It was the future of arts and culture of the UEE and announced her intention to move the entire company to New Austin, a town in Ontario. And nobody liked that. <laughs> um, this, this caused a massive response from the UEE government. This is the new UEE, not the Mezzers, uh, who then jacked their taxes way high to try to punish them from leaving Earth. And uh, didn't really happen, didn't really uh, ma matter. Uh, so, uh, because the new Austin gave them tons of tax breaks and essentially uh, allowed them to make up the difference, um, becoming uh, now uh, new Austin is known as just Origin Town because so many people work for Origin's Jumpworks there in the town. Um, 
the other company that owns fun fact, the other company that owns a lot of product and or uh, kind of does a, a big hire for um, New Austin is uh, Omega Foods, which makes the Crabo chain. Where's the Crabo chain, CIG? <laughs> Where's my crab cakes? This is important. You promised me food in in a in a lore post that made you know five years ago. Where is it, CIG? Sorry, I had, I had to throw a little a little a little a little shade in there. Um, but uh, the, since then, they've they've, they've expanded. They they built more and more ships. They've kind of doubled down on the luxury, re-released the six hundred as its own luxury variant, and have continued to do fairly well. So let's talk a little bit more about these ships specifically. Well, first off, let's talk about the 600. We'll talk, we'll talk about this black guy later. But the 600 series, as I said, was first built in the mid 29th century as a cargo hauler, but they revamped the entire ship to become a luxury vessel in the actual, the, the time, um, in 2947. So the new um, the new 600i came out uh, only a couple of years ago. Um, so this whole design is brand new for the for Origin. This is kind of a return to its roots, but kind of a fluffing up its old old more gritty roots to being more refined and and luxury. So um, it is. There are two variants of it. There's, there's the touring touring, and then there is the exploration ver version. The touring version has or I should say there's the Explorer and then there's the, uh, yeah, the Touring. Uh, the the Explorer has uh, space for only really like one bed and the interior areas that that are on the Touring hat that have rooms for guests uh, is stripped out for just a cargo bay, uh, for a cargo bay and for a massive scanner suite. So it's a little bit better than, um, a little bit more flexible than the Touring version, but both of them, have uh, full bars, entertainment centers, a massive back canopy to see see a lot of a uh, lot of space. Uh, though it may be going under a rework here shortly. This is the 890 Jump. It is a super yacht. It's hard for me to explain what this is, other than saying it's a super yacht. Uh, its introduction was in 2858, shortly after the um, the 600 series had been released, and. Um, this is where like the lore is a little weird because like they can't constantly say that the 200 and 300 is really the beginnings of it, but we have the 890 as, as example. Now, the way that I, I, I can interpret this is that the 890 was not built for the common person. This is a ship that's built for millionaires and billionaires. This is, this is a, a super yacht. It's designed for very specific clientele, possibly even like luxury cruise liner sort of thing. So, this ship is uh, not really built for the masses, whereas the 200s and the 300s were the real first foray into common, you're, you're the average person being able to afford an origin ship. Uh, but this massive ship is uh, designed with a graphite hull, stamina five engines. It comes with its own snub craft with a quantum engine, quantum drive, and a second seat called the 85X. Um, uh, massive communication array. It has two bridges. It has a main bridge and a battle bridge for combat. It has a spa. It has guest rooms. It has a pool. Yes, it has a freaking pool. It has a meeting room, a giant, giant dining room. It has its own in bar. It has its own kitchen. It has its space for for like the help for like like chefs and for for servants. Uh, it has uh, a basketball court and it has a landing pad. It, it's it is legitimately a super yacht. Um, they're used often by big corporations for uh, tours and other things like that, uh, as well as just, you know, for pleasure yacht sort of thing. From the biggest of the big to the smallest of the small, the 100 series has an interesting series, uh, interesting story behind it. The 100 was the first thing that Origin built as their foray, foray into more commercial, more consumer grade chips. And it was a complete and utter failure. It What they did learn from the 100 was um, they used in the construction of the 200s and the 300 series. We haven't heard anything about the 200s in a while, but at least the 300s for, cer for, cer for certain. But in, what was it, 29, probably around, you know, the actual release date of this, so 
20, the end of the of the 2940s, early 2950s, um, Origin decided to relook at the 100 series because they developed something called the air intake system or the air fuel system, which is this top of the line system that would gather particles and help refuel the hydrogen fuel of a uh, of a ship. It allowed for a f incredibly efficient gathering and uh, and increased the range of the 100 much more than its its competitors. So the 100 series was brought back as essentially a test vehicle for the fuel for the uh, the air system. Um, and it's it's pretty good. It's uh, there's a lot of what they they learn from the 300 series in here. You can see the inside is kind of more of a, sm a small angle slope up. You have its own cargo bay interior um, plus an exterior uh, one for the 135C, I believe. It has its own bed, not you know no frills, but a bed, uh, and it's cockpit kind of you know, a little bit a little bit see a little bit e uh, easier, and it's got a low profile with its legs. Um, even though it doesn't have great guns, it has a pretty low profile, so it actually can fit inside an 890 jump. Uh, as well as fit into a lot of uh, transports, including like the the Hercules can even carry these things. So uh, they're fairly flexible. Um, there are different versions. There's the 100i. There's the 125a, which is a combat variant, and the 135c, which is a cargo variant. So all right, let's go see what else is over here. I believe this is the yeah, this is the 135c. I want to say. At 135C. It's got an ex uh, interior cargo bay. I think it also has an exterior cargo bay here in the back, but could be wrong. It seems like there's a, there's a cargo bay in the back. I can't seem to get access to it, but yeah, I think I'm pretty sure there's one. So it actually holds a, quite a lot of, of cargo for what it's uh, was designed, and it's pretty efficient because of the air system. And there's the the uh, that was the the A, the C, and this is the, the just the I. So with that, let's continue to look at origin ships. All right, here we go to the the true beginnings of the commercial era or the the civilian the 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 common era of the origin uh, brand. We've got the 300. So I believe this is the 350R. This is a racing variant of the 300 series, which strips out a lot of the luxury for just pure unbridled speed. Um, uh, it, it won the Murray Cup several times, a famous race, uh, but it is aging compared to some of its competitors. So Origin um, in the 2940s uh, decided that they could do better than the than their their 350R, which had been around for almost 50 years at that point, and uh, build a, a bespoke ship, which we'll talk about here in a moment. This is the 325A. It has an advanced targeting system and a big forward gun here. Uh, size 4 fixed, I believe. Uh, this is a ship that I think a lot of people are going to be sleeping on, but... In, in fiction, it is very much a combat ship. It is a it has all the luxury of all of the Origin uh, 300 series has to offer, plus advanced targeting and bigger guns. Um, so it's it's if you if you like to kill things, but you also put that pinky up when you take in the, the drink. Origin the 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 325A is your is your thing. We'll get to the 400 here in a moment. This is the 300i basic, uh, basic variant. It's just, yeah, plain Jane has has everything you need for um, transporting. It, it, it really shook the market when it first uh, was introduced because there really hadn't been a thought of luxury in a, an affordable package. You know, it's still expensive for compared to its other other ships in its class, but it has a lot more to going for it. The bed is better, has more more storage uh, area. It, it's just it's a fast maneuverable ship. It's just fun to fly. So uh, when it came out, it was, it was fairly well received. And then each of its variants are even like, kind of better at those more specific designs. This is the 315P. It's an Explorer and a cargo variant. It swaps out its front gun with a, um, a tractor beam. And it has an extended amount of cargo compared to the other 300 series. Uh, but it still has all the interiors and stuff. So it, it has less firepower, but for more 
commercial uses. So you, you, know, you want to move a lot of cargo to move a lot of freight the, uh, at a, at a luxurious, luxuriously at a reasonable price. This is not a bad ship to get. Uh, overall, the 300 series was the, the culmination of uh, decades of research by Origin into how to break into more affordable markets. And uh, since then, they've just they've taken off the brakes. Since 2899, when they first introduced these series, they just went. They just, just gone. And since then, they've been, you know, one after another, releasing more affordable, more reasonable ships, even with the 600i, 600i the re-release of the 600, uh, becoming more of a, an everyman's yacht compared to the super yacht of the 890. So here is the 400i, uh, introduced in 2950. Uh, much like the its 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 smaller cousins, the 300s, and its bigger cousin, the 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 600, this was designed to capitalize on more luxury market, though specifically not emphasizing the luxury. This is an explorer ship. It has its own bespoke. Um, get access to it. But it has its own bay here in the front, which is uh, holds an X1, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, and it is uh, designed for long-range travel. And it's got a nice quantum drive on it. It even has a little, uh, little airlock here as well. Um, but it has space for three passengers. It has uh, its own um, suite. I can't really go in there without taking a long time. But <clears throat> it has its own uh, hollow viewer. It has... Uh, uh, a uh, kitchen. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's designed as kind of an, uh, I would say almost like a camper van. Uh, oh yeah. Here's the, the access for it. No, no, I don't want to rent it. <laughs> Game, please. Yeah, uh, it's not working. All right. No, I need to hit it down. There we go. So there's the X one bay. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of like, this is the, you know, the 300i was the culmination of decades of research. The 400i is the is is the culmination of the the revolution that the 300 started inside Origin Jumpworks. So let's talk a little bit about a little a little bit more about its specialized stuff as well as what we're waiting to see here for Origin Jumpworks. Come join us. All right, now we're going to talk about two rival ships, internal rivalries between two ship teams, and the results of both. Starting with the M50. Now, the M50 is the program that was uh, launched by Origin to win the Murray Cup. They wanted to build a ship that could outrace any ship on the market, including the 350R. What they came up with was the M50. This is a cut down. There's no luxury involved in this ship at all. It is just speed. Speed and maneuverability. Uh, it doesn't have quite as much speed as some other ships, but what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in pure reaction. It's, it is it is very hard to hit one of these ships when they're running, <laughs> if you're trying to shoot at it. But it's also very hard to, like this thing can 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 absolutely zip and dodge and dip and do duck and weave and dodge. It's, it's a very good ship for what it's designed to do, to race. In fact, the, it was so, its speed and maneuverability were so impressive that the advocacy reached out to Origin and purchased M50s to be used as interceptors for their um, uh, for their agents. Um, I'll go more in depth with that later, but it created an entire squadron that was dedicated to it. Um, but it was not used at very very extensively it's it's records were a little bit more embellished than we than we'd like to to, to um than, than many would like to admit but it was used fairly effectively um it's still being used by the, the advocacy as kind of like a, a ship that can chase down faster smuggling ships or other ships that are modified to be as fast as possible um because it still has some weaponry on board to help disable um any ships that needs to come across so uh, it is it is a funny racing ship that is also kind of a police vessel. So, but it has a it has its own history. During its development, released uh, initially in 2920, in the decades leading up to its development, it wasn't its only ship for this pro this program. The other ship for the program became known as the 85X. The 85X lost to the M50 just by a hair during this this full. Um, 
program. Uh, but it was used for a snubcraft for the 890 jump. Uh, so the original program for the 85X, it was originally called the, um, look at the name, Model XVB. Um, and though they ultimately went with the M50, uh, they brought this back. Um, it was, they were so impressed with the design and the fact that it has two seats that they were they brought it back to be used for the uh, 80, uh, 890 jumps snubcraft. Uh, so every 890 comes with an 85X. So you can buy these um, uh, off the market as well. They, they have quantum drives on them. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, this is, if you're looking at this and go, this looks like an M50. It's like, cause they were designed for the same purpose. <laughs> Let's look at the other ships, which aren't quite ready for origin. I think there's only one back here. Yeah, only one. The G12. So the 600 and the 890 have extensive uses by the military. The military uses them for VIP transports. And so when Origin got involved in the um, creation of a ground vehicle, um, there's the X1, which they don't have down here, which was sort of their first one, but it was actually a cooperative venture with a company called um, Infinity Customs, specifically a man by the name of um, Alberto Vara who owned Infinity Customs. So it was kind of like a Infinity Customs designed it, but Origin built it sort of thing. Um, the 85 or the, the G12 was built specifically as a luxury touring vessel. Um, it holds a little bit of cargo, but it was designed to carry people from point A to point B in a sealed canopy. So you didn't have to wear a spacesuit. So you could sip your champagne and, and, <laughs> and explore the, the universe. Um, it's also designed to be fast and a good all around vehicle. It doesn't have a gun, but it does have um, uh, apparently this one says it does have a gun. I don't remember it having a gun, but it's, it's designed for exploration. It's designed for luxury transport um, and the most comfortable accommodations. There's also the, this variant, which is the, um, the G12A and the G12R. The G12R is a racing variant, which is designed specifically for racing to compete against the Cyclone, uh, the, the, the emergent Cyclone series. Uh, but the, uh, the G12A is actually a military transport. It has some missile capabilities up in the top. It's over armored and it is designed to transport generals and admirals around a battle, a battle zone, get them out, get them to and from places pretty easily. Um, similar to, you know, up armored, um, luxury SUVs that you might've seen in the Middle East, um, about 10 years ago. Um, but it also has something called the advanced enhanced wheel system. The Altamari XI dash, I'm sorry, eight, uh, XH01 enhanced hardened wheel system, um, that, that you all have. So they can actually su surprisingly survive a lot of, um, direct attacks to their wheels to keep them a little bit more safe. Plus you also have some of these, these wheel guards that'll protect them a little bit as well. But that's it for origin here on the floor. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did remember, like the video, it helps spread the word a lot. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We do stuff like this all the time and trying to get back into do uh, Galactic Historian videos once every two weeks again. Um, hopefully, maybe even more, depending on if I can <laughs> scrape out too much time. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure you comment down below. Do you like Origin? Do you think the Origins are good ships? Do you enjoy the lore behind Origin? Would you like to know more lore about any specific ship? Because there is some extensive lore behind every one of these ships that I could do a, their own museum episodes on uh, in the future as well. So let me know if you want that as well. Uh, and like I say every time, uh, nope, like I say every time, Exhistoria at Astra.